there it is. I just looked up on my bookshelf, and there it is. I'll pull it down and show it to you. It's called the Life Application Bible, or the Application Bible. It's a great Bible. This particular copy is of the Living Bible. It's a paraphrase uh, published by the Tyndall House Publishers. I like the Application Bible because, of course, it's the Bible. The Application Bible was developed by an international team of pastors, scholars, family counselors, and a national organization that's dedicated to promoting God's Word. What this Bible is great about doing is it gets you to ask questions when you read the Bible. Questions such as, what does what I'm reading mean to me? How does it apply to my life? It seeks to help you find these timeless truths behind the stories of the first century. Since over 74% of what the Bible talks about is application-oriented, this is a great thing. I like the application Bible, and I recommend it to people to read on a regular basis. Yet, today as I sat there and I looked at this application Bible, it suddenly struck me as funny. The Application Bible. And I thought, what other kind is there? I mean, great day, folks. Hang on a second here. What other kind of Bible is there other than an Application Bible? I got to thinking about it. Is there an inquisitive Bible for inquiring minds who want to know? Is there a knowledge Bible? for people who just want to acquire more facts and be more educated? Is there a judgmental Bible for people that want to be able to use the Bible to criticize other people for their shortcomings? Perhaps there is a political Bible for those who want to use the Bible to advance their political agendas. No, the Bible is an application Bible. Because the Bible was written so that we might know and then do something about what we know. I guess this struck me a little weird today because of experiences I've had in my lifetime. I've been studying the Bible my whole life. I read it and was taught it as a child. I dug into its trenches seriously as a teenager. I was obsessed with it. Then as a young adult, I studied it scholastically. All my life, I've invested myself in learning the Bible. Yet, at every stage, the Bible is still an application Bible. <laughs> I can remember being in Bible studies. I remember seeing people who were fascinated with the truths of the Bible and then get up and go to lunch and do the exact opposite of what the Bible had said in that Bible study. I've seen people come to church hear the Bible talk, and then walk out and lie, cheat, steal, murmur, complain, criticize. You get the point. I'm making a big deal out of this today because the Bible was meant to be applied. That's the point. The Bible is an application Bible. If you think I'm just making this up, listen to what James said in James 1.22. He wrote, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. Jesus himself said in Matthew 7, 24, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. That's the key. It's not just hearing, it's doing. It's not just hearing, it's putting it into practice. That's application. Jesus also said in John 13, 17, Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. You're not going to be blessed because you know them. You're blessed when you do them. It's not just enough to know the Bible. Our problem today is not that we don't know enough. It's that we don't do what we know. I know so many believers who are so concerned about learning new facts and new information about the Bible. Yet, what have we done with what we've learned? 
My favorite definition of preaching is this. Preaching is reminding people of things they already know, but have not done anything about yet. <laughs> Daniel Webster says the word apply means to use or to put to use. It is to dedicate, commit, focus, or pay attention to. I wonder if we've done that with the Bible. Is your Bible an application Bible? Have you focused on what it says long enough to do what it says? Have we dedicated ourselves to living by what it says? Don't get me wrong. We're not believers and we're not going to heaven based on how well we perform or apply. Salvation is not dependent upon our personal performance. God on the cross in the person of Jesus has provided grace and forgiveness for that. As a matter of fact, that is a part of the Bible we need to apply, grace and forgiveness. We're to let God's grace and forgiveness be applied to our fallen lives. Yet when we do read scripture, there needs to be an attempt and a desire to apply or to put it into practice in our lives. Today, I want to challenge you to not let your faith or your Bible be anything but an application Bible. That's what God intends it to be. Here's a great thought for the day. Be doers, not just hearers. Here's a great prayer for today. Say, God, help me to learn. Please teach me to put into practice in my life every day what you say. God bless you as you read your application Bible today.